Hey there, my name is Ryan Dossey, and I'm going to walk you through how to start investing in real estate as a total beginner by giving you a for dummies level walkthrough of a flip I just completed in November that made us $74,000. Let's dive right in. So the absolute first step to investing in real estate as a beginner is you have to find a really good deal. Now there's a number of ways you could do that. You could find a realtor and look for stuff on the MLS. You could buy something from wholesalers, but my number one way of finding lucrative off-market opportunities is through direct mail. So what I mean by off-market is it's a property that's not on the MLS. Like for real beginners, MLS stands for multiple listing services. Basically it's just not on the market. It's not advertised as being for sale anywhere. Not just any direct mail though, my number one source for these deeply discounted houses that we end up flipping, wholesaling, or keeping as rental properties is through ballpoint marketing. Now what makes ballpoint unique, they actually have robots that hold pens and like handwrite letters. So when it shows up, it's written in cursive, the pen ink is smeared, it's smudged. You can't tell that it wasn't done from a person. Now, obviously if we're gonna send somebody a piece of mail, well, we have to know who that person is to start. So there's two main data providers I use. The first one is a group called Deal Machine. Ballpoint can actually pull your lists for you. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh, this is starting to get overwhelming, literally you can go to ballpointmarketing.com, book a call with one of our guys, and they'll walk through what do you want, what market are you in, and they'll give you all the advice and even pull the list for you based off of what you're looking for. So that's option number one is Deal Machine. The second option, if you're feeling a little bit more savvy or maybe you're a little bit more experienced is PropStream. PropStream.com is a data provider that I have used and paid for for years. We endorse them heavily because they've made us a lot of money, but it's basically like a self-service platform. You can create an account. They've got a free, I think it's a seven day trial now, and you can literally go on, punch in zip codes, pick out what kind of properties you want, download a list then go over to ballpointmarketing.com and buy that list, which I will literally show you how to do. So this particular flip that made us $74,000 came off of a prop stream list and a ballpoint marketing postcard. So I'm gonna walk you through pulling the exact list that we used and buying the exact piece of mail that we sent. So this particular deal, I was actually in an area called New Cumberland in Pennsylvania. So in this top section here, you're simply gonna type where you're looking for the deal and hit enter. Then you're gonna go over here to filter and we're gonna add in the particular characteristics that we're looking for. Right now, this is just any property of any kind in New Cumberland, which is obviously like way, way too wide of a net. So we're gonna go down to property characteristics. And in this instance, we're only looking for houses. If you were looking for apartments or condos or you know, shoot, even dairy farms, you can find that kind of stuff in here. We're then gonna go down here into valuation and equity info. And I always do an equity range of 35 to 100%. The reason that we do that in my experience, that means somebody can actually afford to sell us the property at a price point where it makes sense for us as investors. So equity is simply the like spread between what you owe on the place and what it's worth. So the more equity you have, the less you owe on the place, the less equity you have, the more in debt you are on the house. So that 35 to 100% equity means that their mortgage, either they don't have one or at the absolute most, their mortgage is 65% of what the house is worth. So we've now added in this 35 to 100% equity field. You can see that's narrowed this down from like 7,000 down to 4,300. Now this particular house uh, was actually one that was what they call um, an interfamily transfer. So effectively the property changed ownership, but stayed in the same family. In this instance, unfortunately, the woman who owned the house, her husband passed away, the home went to her and it was kind of like a hoarder situation, which is unfortunate, but it happens. So as you can see here, this is actually like a pretty small campaign. There's only 48 people. Now, full disclosure, uh, ballpoints minimum is 500 because it's a lot of work to like approve a proof, get everything sent over to you, uh, that it just, it's not cost effective to do that small of a campaign. So in the comments below, I'll link to a couple other of these kind of small niche lists that I really like to help you get up to that minimum. 
even when we did this particular mailing, it was a combination of a couple things. It wasn't just this one small list, just kind of like proper expectations of what we're typically seeing. We're getting an off market deal in a market like this from anywhere from like 2,500 to $4,000 worth of marketing. I typically tell folks the average is two to 3K, unless you're in a more expensive market like Nashville, LA, where you could be closer to 5,000. LA, you're probably closer to like seven. So just kind of proper expectations on what to expect. So here in prop stream, we're going to save this list. I'm gonna simply check this box here, add to list, and we're gonna call this New Cumberland Inherited. And all we're going to do is click save. Wait for it to do its thing. What's the Jeopardy theme song? Da, 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 da. Going to hop over here into my properties. I'm going to scroll down to that New Cumberland Inherited one. Check this box here, and then we're going to go to export. That'll then download the list that you're going to send over to Ballpoint. So this particular deal came off of the Ballpoint Americana, like the sell my house fast hot rod style. It's actually this guy right here. So if you wanted to order that particular piece, you'd simply go to products, postcard sequence. We're going to do Americana, but we're actually going to do a one-off, not the sequence. So we click down here and we would do the sell your house fast one. And we're going to click add to cart. Now that will add it to your cart and pop up to the next screen for you. Where you're simply going to enter in your information, check out and click place order. Now the staff at ballpoint will actually reach out to you, get that list and any of the other information they need, like your return mail address, what phone number you want on the mail. They can help with any questions or concerns you have at that point. So literally just go on, fill that out, check it out. And then they'll reach out to you to get that list that you actually exported out. Now I wouldn't be being like totally upfront with you guys if I left out the fact that we do use websites. So this particular seller got the piece of mail because she was on that prop stream list, went to the website that was printed on the postcard and actually filled out a form. So we use this group called Carrot. This is their website. Um, they're pricing, they're 69 bucks a month. And I'm actually gonna show you my site, which I don't typically do on these. So this was the website that uh, the seller actually went to and filled out the information here in order to get on the phone with us. Now, one thing that is super duper important if you're marketing off market like this, is you have to answer the phone when the calls come in. It can be tempting to like, let them go to voicemail, see if they're interested and call them back if they are. But the fact of the matter is you're going to get more deals and make more money if you pick up those calls live. Now, real talk, I dropped 64,000 postcards the last two months. It is a lot of phone calls that I'm personally not going to take. So we own a sister company, it's callporter.com. We've got around 25 agents that are all based in the US that only take calls for real estate investors. Most of the folks that I end up working with have them take the calls because they have day jobs and families. Call Porter's open 24 seven and they're taking upwards of 20,000 calls a month for people just like you. Now we do track all of the opportunities that come in inside of our CRM Resimply. This is this actual seller inside of the CRM. So this is like proof that the whole thing worked. Now, if you watch my other videos, in other markets, we've done a better job of working our leads, tracking and noting things and all that. Um, this is actually a partnership with a friend of mine, Gus. So this was Gus's first time ever marketing for a flip like this. Was This was the first flip that he's ever done. So there's not as much in here as I typically like, but I did just want to show you like this is the tool we use to work and track all of our leads. Early on when I was just starting out, I'd have like a notebook or like a Google Sheet or an Excel doc. You can use something like that early on to save on some costs. But once you get to the point that you've got a couple dozen leads, it makes sense to work them in something formal. For my folks that are watching this that are like true beginners wanting to get started in real estate investing, you don't necessarily have to go through like 
setting up a company, setting up a website, like a lot of this stuff that I've showed, you can simply reach out to Ballpoint, have them pull a list and market unbranded just as yourself for the first couple. That should be dangerous enough to get you a deal. But ideally, ultimately, if you're going to treat this like a business, you want to run it as one. So on this particular deal that came off of what I just showed you how to do, we use what we call the 75% rule to figure out what we want to pay for places like this. So we look at what the house is worth. On this particular deal, we thought it was worth 210,000. We go 75% of that. So we're building in a 25% profit margin. We then subtract out the cost of repairs. On this place, we estimated $70,000. And what's left is what we call our MAO or our max allowable offer. Effectively, that's what we want to pay and we don't want to go above that number. Now, it is our max. So we tend to start below that. And below that, it's just kind of how much confidence do you have? If you're wholesaling, most guys are shooting for like 8 to 10. If you're flipping, a lot of guys are shooting for like 10, 20 or 30 just because there's more risk involved. On this particular deal, we actually got a substantially better deal than the 75% rule. We ended up buying this house for just 65,000 bucks. Now, just in the interest of keeping this like for beginners level simple, I'm going to show you the actual rehab budget that we came up with on this particular deal. So this was what we based this entire remodel off of. I'm not going to go through this like line by line, just because quite frankly, I think you'd get bored, but down to like, bathrooms, painting, flooring. Um, we ended up having like a $6,000 foundation repair that we had to do. Um, this is how we kind of figured out like what we needed to put into the deal. Now, because you're watching this and you're either looking to do a flip, start flipping, or just wanting to start investing in real estate in general, I realize you're not going to know how much it is to paint the siding, things of that nature. Um, there's a tool I recommend. It's called Rehab Estimator Pro that allows you to go in, punch in square footage, and it'll give you like rough numbers for this. The other way, what I did when I was just starting out, I found three local general contractors. I'd have them walk through the house with me and I'd have them tell me, hey, what they think this particular deal is going to cost. Now, one thing to note with that, it's a really good idea to write out room by room, line by line, what you're wanting to have done on the place. That way, you know you're comparing like to like. I don't typically do this, but I actually had Gus who did all of this aspect of this deal do an hour long masterclass for my mastermind group CCF. It's not something we typically release or share publicly. So I'm not even going to publish it on YouTube. I'm going to leave it unlisted, but I'm going to pin it in the comments below. So if you're curious how to manage a rehab like this, he got this done in 30 days. Absolutely nuts to get a $70,000 remodel done flawlessly in a month. So if you're looking for like how to hire contractors, how to pay them, how to make sure you don't get taken advantage of, make sure you watch that below. I'm giving you guys so much on this that I'm not even going to turn ads on on that sucker. So you can literally sit there, watch it. Also gives you a sneak peek of what working with us a little bit more closely looks like. So on this case study so far, we've talked about how we marketed for the deal, how we came up with what to pay for the place. What we haven't talked about is how did I buy it? On this one, I didn't cut a check for the $65,000 purchase and the $70,000 remodel. I used what's known as a private lender. Now that sounds like it's something like secretive or something. It's really not. It's just a private individual like you or like me that has cash sitting that wants to do something with it. Typically with private money, we're paying people 8% interest plus one point. So on like a $100,000 loan, if I had their money for an entire year, I'm going to pay them eight grand in interest plus that point. A point is just equal to 1%. So a thousand bucks. So it didn't really cost us that much to borrow the money to do this deal, especially given the fact that we were in and out in 90 days. Uh, that's pretty dang solid. Now, if you're just watching this and like you don't have a wealthy relative or somebody that would lend you money for a deal like this, that's totally cool. When I was just starting out, I didn't have private lenders or anything like that either. So if you don't have those connections, don't worry about it. My first several, I actually split profits with somebody I knew that I thought might be interested. If that doesn't work for you, a lot of people use what's called hard money. 
Hard money is like private money, but it's like a group or an entity that does it for a living. The downside with hard money is they're a little bit more expensive. They tend to be like 10% interest plus two points, and they're often not going to fund your entire purchase and your entire rehab. A pretty typical like hard money structure is they'll fund 90% of your purchase and 100% of your rehab. So to get a hard money loan on a deal like this, I would have maybe came out of pocket like 10 grand. Now, I personally, just being totally transparent with you, haven't used hard money. I started out like splitting deals with people. I then learned how to raise private money, which we've got tons of videos on this channel actually about that. But if you're looking for hard money, I've got three recommendations from my clients that I work with on who they've had really good results with. So the first one is Iron Bridge Lending. With most of these, they've got just like a form you're going to fill out with like your name, um, contact info, what kind of deal you're looking for funded. They'll reach out and it is like an application process to see if they want to work with you. The second one here is Fund That Flip. A lot of our guys actually use this group. Again, just kind of go through their front door and figure out what their process is. The third one that we've had good luck with as well is Dominion Financial. Um, these guys are based out of Baltimore and they're investors themselves. So similar, like go through their front door, figure out the process when you have a deal and figure out if they want to work with you. One perk of hard money lender is they can kind of act like a seatbelt for you. So if you're just starting out, you might not be totally sure that you've got a good deal or totally sure that your like rehab estimates are dialed. Well, these guys don't want to lose their money. So they're going to fact check your own numbers, kind of what you came up with. Um, so there's pros and cons to it. Hard money is going to be more expensive, but they also might kind of help you out. Whereas if you're just dealing with a private lender, they might just give you the money and your numbers might be wrong and you could lose money. So just to kind of put a bow on this video, on this particular deal from title, our net to us profit check after paying back our lender was $74,000. In 90 days, the seller called in, we bought the place, remodeled it, sold it, got $74,000 back. Now that's not all profit. So there are gonna be things like utilities, taxes, insurance. If we went over budget at all, like all of that is going to have to come out of that before what we're left with is our profit. Now, just full disclosure on this deal, Gus and I each put $10,000 into this business for $20,000 total to start it. What? A lot of you guys might be seeing content from other people where they're like, no time, no money, no credit, no effort, no risk. If you're getting that kind of feedback, the person's probably full of it. I've done hundreds of deals. It's either going to take a lot of time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears on your part to get deals like this done, or it's going to cost you some money. What I find is the more money you're willing to spend, the more quickly you're going to get results. That's just my two cents, my kind of disclaimer against like the typical guru that tells you you can get rich quick doing this. So what Gus and I did on this particular deal was we each paid ourselves back. So he took his $10,000 out. I took my $10,000 out. What we're left with in this new business is $54,000 now of operating capital. So we went from like, this is something we want to do or try to, hey, this is a business now that's running, that's paid for itself, that has its own cash to sustain itself. He got his money back. I got my money back. We're now playing with house money. That's the best way to do this. I wanted to give you guys just like a couple line item expenses of where that first $20,000 went. So we spent a total of $6,700 on ballpoint marketing. We spent another $2,364 having call Porter answer our phones over the course of like five to six months. We spent $414 on our investor care website, and we spent $894 to have ReSimply as our CRM. All in all, we turned $20,000 into $74,000, giving a $54,000 net profit spread in like three to four months. There's not another investment vehicle that I'm aware of where you can safely, what is that, almost 3x your capital in 90 to 120 days. Now, I know that might sound a little like get rich quick if you're a beginner, but the fact of the matter is it's doable if you market, if you're conservative in your numbers, 
On this particular house, we thought it would sell for 210. It actually sold for 245. So we made even more there, right? So don't go out to try to set records. Be conservative, provide a good product. And at the end of the day, make sure you're getting a really good deal. I hope that you found this like deep dive for beginners level case study helpful. My goal with these is always to be the resource I was looking for when I just started out. Often I'd see things like, hey, we did this house, we made this much, but it's like, cool. As somebody that wants to do that, like, how do I do what you're doing? My goal with videos like this is like, we've kind of shown you the entire process. If there's anything that I left out or any terms I used that you didn't understand, please ask me in the comments below. I've done this for so long that I can kind of talk at a level that I just assume you know what I'm talking about. So if there's anything at all that I can clarify for you, please just ask me in the comments below. I personally respond to all of those. Hopefully you found this tutorial on how to invest in real estate as an absolute beginner helpful. My name is Ryan Dossie. Thank you for your time. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll talk to you next time.